absolutely everything you need to know about Workhorse so far. What is happening investors? It is your boy Jack. I am not a financial advisor. I got the clothing line to prove it. And today, we have a special video for you guys. I speak about Workhorse on the channel a lot. Today, I want to do a complete and utter recap on everything that you need to know about Workhorse so far. The prep time that this video took is more than any video I've ever put up. I want to make a video that you can go back and reference when you are doing your due diligence on Workhorse. I have tried to put absolutely all of the necessary information into this one video that you need to know about Workhorse. If you're a newer investor and you watch my Workhorse videos, you just know the most up-to-date information. This video is going to give you a whole lot of in-detail information. So I don't want to waste any of your guys' time and we have a lot to get to. So before we get into it, can I please ask you to hit that juicy like button? It means the world to me and a lot of work has gone into this video. If you're new around here, please hit that juicy red subscribe button, people. It's completely free. Join the family. We speak about Workhorse every single week. And please drop me a comment down below. You know, let me know if you enjoy the video or if there's anything else you want to add to today's video that you think people will find interesting. Anyway, guys, with that being said, let's get into the history of Workhorse so far. So starting at the very beginning, Workhorse was actually founded all the way back in 1998 by Stephen Burns. The company was founded by investors who took over the production of General Motors P30 and P30 32 series. By 2005, okay, they were taken over by Navistar International, which had been selling them diesel engines. Navistar then shuttered the plant in 2012 to cut costs after having suffered losses. In March 2015, this is when things started to get real for Workhorse, okay? AMP Electric Vehicles took over Workhorse Custom Chassis, changing the company name to Workhorse Group Incorporated, and began offering a range of electrically powered delivery vans. So 2015 is when things really started to get real for this company. And we can see here that we went public the 8th of August 2014, and we were $1.01 a share back then. You can see that we traded up, we traded down, and as of right now, we're up in the $16 range. So what has Workhorse done so far? I'm not too concerned about this back in 98, okay, in regards to these P30s and P32s. What Workhorse is known for right now is their last mile delivery vehicles. What they're really known for is their Workhorse C-Series vehicles, in particular the C650 and the C1000. So these right here are Workhorse's babies, people. This is the foundation of their entire business. But before this was their sole purpose, okay, there was a pickup truck. A pickup truck called the W15, which you may now know as Lordstown Motors Endurance Pickup Truck. Now, they also have some fantastic drone technology, and they even dabbled with an electric helicopter at one stage, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Where it's going to start now is the electric pickup truck. So, Steve Burns, founder and former CEO of Workhorse. He left Workhorse to form a brand new company named Lordstown Motors. The reason he left Workhorse was because of this right here, okay? Their endurance pickup truck, an all-American, all-EV pickup truck. Once Steve Burns left, Dwayne Hughes became the CEO and still is as of right now. So now, Workhorse did not have to worry about this pickup truck. And that brings us to this moment in time, Workhorse is known for these vehicles right here, their C-Series vehicles, last mile electric delivery. So since Steve left Workhorse in order to create this new company that could just put all of their effort, time and resources into the endurance truck, that means that Workhorse could now put all of their time, effort and resources into last mile delivery vehicles. Now drone technology is another focus, but again we'll get into that later. This is the bread and butter of Workhorse right here in front of you. And I honestly think that this is the most important decision that potentially will ever be made in regards to both of these companies. It means that all of their effort and resources can go into their particular niche. So obviously this here, the endurance pickup truck started with Workhorse. And if you're a company and you put a lot of time, effort and resources into developing a product, you're not just going to give it away for free. So in return, for their initial work on this project, Workhorse now has, okay, a 10% non-dilutable stake in Lordstown Motors. They will also receive a 1% royalty on each of the first 200,000, yes, 200,000, thousand endurance trucks that are sold by Lordstown Motors. And we do expect this pickup truck to be on the market by next year. We expect this to be the first all-electric, all-American-made pickup truck on the roads by next year. Now keep in mind that I said first because that is very important. So we know Workhorse has a 10% non-dilutable stake in Lordstown Motors right now and they are going public through a reverse merger with the SPAC company Diamond Peak Holdings. Pro forma implied equity value of this combined company is approximately $1.6 billion. This is a company who also already has over $1.4 billion worth of pre-orders. Now that 
$1.6 billion pro forma equity value is at $10 per share of pipe. Currently, Lordstown is trading at $17.64 a share. I think that there is a very realistic possibility that we go up to $25 to $30 a share by merger, which means that Warcourse could be getting a very, and I mean very nice cash infusion just from Lordstown Motors going public and raising all of this extra capital. So understand from the start, these two companies are extremely intertwined. Workhorse will, however, benefit from Lordstown Motors more than Lordstown Motors will benefit from Workhorse. In my opinion, this initial cash infusion that Workhorse is going to receive from Lordstown Motors going public is going to be so, so valuable in the short term. I mean, Workhorse currently has about $105 million of cash on hand. And I interviewed the CFO of this company and in that interview and in the Q2 earnings, he said that that will be enough to get them through operation for this year and next year into 2022. So any sort of a cash infusion from Diamond Peak that could be worth hundreds of millions of dollars will put Workhorse in a fantastic position. Here is an extract from the Q2 earnings. With the cash coming in from those exercises and the finance, and we currently have, that should say 105 million of cash, not 10.5 million. We believe this cash will allow us to ramp up the production to hit our target level this year. This year, the target of production is 300 to 400 vehicles, excluding any, you know, major contract that may come to fruition. Fund next year's operations as well take us into 2022 before we may need additional financing. So already we're in a very good cash position. Lowerstown going public will put us into a much better cash position, which means faster growth for us investors. Now, where things start to get really exciting and why Workhorse really is on the map, the USPS contract. This is without a doubt Workhorse's biggest short-term growth catalyst and is what has got a lot of people involved in this company as of late. So if you are living under a rock, you may not be aware of this, okay? But everybody else in the world knows. The US Post Service is to award a $6.3 billion contract for a new mail truck this year. There are three finalists left. One, obviously being Workhorse. Complete and utter EV and complete and utterly American own. The second one is a company called Oshkosh, okay, who is partnered with Ford. This, in my opinion, is, you know, the other major competitor left. They are creating a hybrid solution and Oshkosh is not American owned. So it's hybrid and not 100% American owned. Then we have Carson and Morgan Olsen. This is a Turkish company. They are also offering a hybrid option. I am not worried about these guys whatsoever, in all honesty. One thing I'm not going to get into in today's video is politics, but if you've watched some of my previous videos, you know that I think there are quite a few political motives in regards to, you know, this USPN contract being outsourced to an American provider. I don't think Carson really stands much of a chance. So there are three companies left, and in my opinion, Workhorse is the front runner. Again, I'm not going to get too much into why exactly. That is a video for another day, and I actually have loads of videos on that if you want to check them out. But this is the biggest news out there right now. So again, Workhorse is the only all-American-owned pure EV play left in the running for this USPS contract. I believe there are two main concerns that people have in regards to Workhorse and this contract. One is the lack of production history. I mean, they have not taken on a project this big ever. And the other is their cash position. Now, in regards to production capacity, okay, Workhorse themselves owns a plant that is capable of producing up to 60,000 vehicles a year, which will be more, and I mean so much more than enough, not only for the USPS contract, but also for any obligation that Workhorse wants to take on. In the interview I did with the CFO, we also spoke about this, and there is always the option of outsourcing to Lordstown Motors if it is ever necessary. But honestly, guys, me personally, I don't think that will be necessary. But as the CFO said himself, it is always good to have options. So in regards to actual production capacity, there should be zero worries in anyone's mind. Their plant alone is fully capable of this, not to mention they have Lowerstown's massive plant. And just so that you understand how big Lowerstown's plant is, it's 6.2 million square feet. This is one of the biggest plans for electric vehicles out there, people. Understand that. Production capacity is not an issue. Now, cash on the other hand, you could argue. With that being said, I think Workhorse has a whole lot of avenues to go about generate more cash. As of right now, we're in a fantastic cash position, okay? Some people will argue that. I think we're in a fantastic cash position. They're also going to have a very, very big cash infusion by the end of this year through Lordstown Motors going public. They will have continued cash flow next year from vehicle sales and also Lordstown Motor sales coming into the back half of next year. If you win the contract, USPS is obviously going to give you some money before you start giving them some vehicles. I am not worried about Workhorse being able to handle any percentage of this contract. They will find a way. Workhorse also has a strategic alliance with Duke Energy. Essentially, Duke Energy will be able to manage and take care of, you know, all of the charging infrastructure and utilities that come alongside electric vehicles. So essentially, Duke Energy will work with existing and future Workhorse customers, including the development of the EV infrastructure requirements for its current and future blue chip customers, including both commercial and government fleets. And I mean, Duke Energy, massive, 
massive business, massive name, extremely, extremely well-known company. They have that strategic alliance, so you do not have to worry about infrastructure. It is all going to be taken care of. You cannot overlook just how important this alliance is going forward, people. And again, this is something I spoke about with the CFO in my interview, and it just filled me with even more confidence. Duke Energy also has a whole lot of connections in the world of, you know, fleets and electric vehicles in general. They could potentially, you know, bring new clients, new customers, new fleet managers to Workhorse Group. Workhorse is HVIP eligible. So this is an incentive from the Californian Air Resources Board, and it essentially means that Workhorse's vehicles are eligible for monetary vouchers up to the amount of $50,000. And what's even more interesting is that currently the HVIP program is withholding additional voucher requests until the fall of 2020. Workhorse will remain on the eligible vehicle list until additional funding has been designated for the program. So essentially, if a company wants to buy a last mile delivery vehicle in California, there is a massive, and I mean massive, massive incentive to go with Workhorse. They are also able to sell their vehicles in all 50 states right now. They can sell absolutely anywhere. One thing I want to bring up that I'm going to keep bringing up in videos for a while. Now it's not directly related to Workhorse, but it will affect them majorly in a very good way. On Thursday, Jerome Powell spoke, okay, and he announced that new Fed approach to inflation that could keep rates lower for longer. What this means is the central bank will be more inclined to allow inflation to run higher than the standard 2% target before hiking interest rates, which essentially means lower interest rates which means that companies at the stage of their life cycle like workers will find it easier to take out loans if needed to fund projects such as a USPS contract. It will not be as expensive and it will be easier to get those funds. This is just something I want to keep pushing guys because this is very important for growth investors in general. It puts every single growth stock in a better position. Workhorse also has drones and several patents in regards to their drones. You can see it right here, the Horsefly UAV delivery system. Essentially this is a drone that will be attached to the top of a delivery van, okay, that will be completely autonomous and will deliver packages for you. This offers some extra extremely, and I mean extremely cheap delivery costs. Reduces the per package last mile cost by 95% to about 4 cents per mile. I believe it can actually be as low as 2 to 3 cents per mile versus $1 per mile for a gas vehicle. And keep in mind guys, this is all why a delivery man could be delivering a different package. Again, something I did actually ask about in my interview with the CFO. You could drive left, deliver a package, this drone could then fly off to the right and deliver another package. Now these will not be working properly for at least 12 to 18 months or so. They have gotten a little bit of bad press lately in regards to these horsefly drones, does not worry me in the slightest guys. I mean, they're not meant to be out there working for another 12 to 18 months at least anyway. But this is more of a medium term growth catalyst. When this comes to fruition, margins are going to get even better. We have a lot going for us in the next three months. We also have catalysts that won't be kicking in properly for a year, two years down the line. We just have this incredible constant flow of catalysts coming through. Also worth mentioning, okay, there is an 18 billion annual addressable market size for last mile delivery vehicles in the US. Right now, the average selling price for last mile delivery vehicles is $50,000, which could be as high as $75,000 within five years, which again could lead to much better vehicle margins and gross profit margins in the next five years. Considering that in general, these vehicles actually can get cheaper to make, especially as battery technology gets cheaper, as batteries are the most expensive part of an EV in general. There is a lot of catalysts. They've worked with UPS for years and years now, another major, major last mile delivery operator. They've had six orders placed today totaling 1,345 vehicles. On that, there is an 1,100 vehicle order backlog right now. So they do have orders that they are trying to fulfill. All in the meantime, there are these growth catalysts coming through. As well, autonomous driving is always something that gets brought up in regards to electric vehicles. It's not as important with these last mile delivery vehicles, but still worth bringing up. Again, a question I asked the CFO in regards to autonomous driving before. He said they more than likely won't develop their own, but they could just buy it off the shelf. And you know, it could just recognize where a mailbox is, drive straight there, get out, deliver the package and move on. But it's always something worth bringing up with EV stocks. Something I don't think people appreciate enough about this company is this, the real-time telematics. They have a cloud-based, database driven proof of performance system. Provides clients access to real-time data to monitor and measure performance. And gives fleet operators the ultimate energy and route efficiency management. So not only is this a selling point for new fleet managers, it could also be an add-on to your vehicles, similar to how Tesla charges extra for certain levels of autonomous driving, you know, it could be an add-on that would bring even more profit into the company, and there is very little cost associated with it, so it would be nearly completely and utterly profit. Something like this could also be sold on to other electric vehicle manufacturers, which again, could be a big cash infusion. I don't think we should be underestimating their AI by any means whatsoever. They are ahead of the competition with their electric vehicles, they're ahead of the competition with their drone technology, and they also seem to have absolutely amazing telematics. And guys, 
guys, that is what you need to know about Workhorse so far. Of course, there is more we could go into, especially when it comes to the whole politics of the USPS situation, but that's not what I want this video to be about. This company, in my eyes, is absolutely amazing and is offering a genuine once in a lifetime opportunity, even at the prices we're at now. If you have watched until the end, you obviously have a great interest in Workhorse. I am in a group on Facebook. I'll have it on the screen now. It's called Workhorse WKH Stock Investors and Traders. You will find some absolutely incredible information inside of this group. And one of the biggest motivations I had to create this video was actually from a post that was in this group. From a man named Willie Simmons. I, I don't know if that's how I pronounce your name, bro. I'm really sorry. I am absolutely positive you will have watched this video, so hopefully you enjoyed. But genuinely, guys, if you want up-to-date workhorse information, if you want to chat with a community of like-minded investors, it's a fantastic page. And of course, I am in there. I pop in and chat every now and again. So I highly recommend going and checking out that Facebook page if you want to. But guys, that is it for today's video. So guys, whether you are new to looking into workhorse or you're a veteran who's been there a lot longer than I have been, I hope that I was able to give you some sort of valuable information in this video. Even if you knew everything, it's always nice to just get a little bit of a refresher every now and again. And if you think I missed out anything that's super important, please do drop it in the comment section below. I'm sure that people will appreciate it. People are always down there reading the comments, myself included. And again, guys, if you have watched until the end and you did enjoy, could I please ask you to hit that like button if you haven't yet, because this video genuinely did take a lot of prep. And if you're new around here, hit that juicy red subscribe button, people, especially if you're a workhorse investor. I mean, we speak about them every single week, usually twice a week. Now, I will put up a disclaimer and say that, of course, there are risks associated with this company, okay, especially in the short term. I put up a video not too long ago about my price tag as for workhorse, and if we don't get a piece of the USPS contract, I see a massive, and I mean massive, pullback happening in the short term. In the long term, though, I think even without the USPS contract, this is an amazing, and I mean amazing company. So, guys, with all that being said, I really do hope you enjoyed. I appreciate you so much for watching till the end. You, my friend, are a true legend. Have an absolutely fantastic day. I will see you for the next video. Peace.